These are glory days and not gloomy days. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. And we will rejoice and be glad to be in it. I have a, my wonderful guest and my dear friend, Bo Pony, on right now. And I'm telling you, you know what? I We just love him. Every, he, he is like original. He is original. You know, there is nobody that I, I that does like Bo. He is so original. And I thank God for what God has been doing with him in our time, in our time frame, in our generation. God is so good. We need these men and women of God, you know, because it's confirmation. And I'm listening to Bo. And I love the revelation God gives him. You know, I'm a, I'm a preacher, but God, but and I love the way Bo breaks it down in, in just just unique ways. And you know, he's not saying, and I want to make sure you guys understand, Brother Bo's not saying I'm a he's a prophet. He's just giving you the breakdowns of what the scriptures is showing. That doesn't mean it's going to happen on that same day or the same. It, it's just it just kind of gives you that the the platform. The, the season that we're living in. And I get it. I get it. I get it. And I love it. God has blessed them in this platform. And we learn a lot from him, saints. I learn a lot from him. And I see the mantle that God has given him. And, you know, and, you know, but like I said, so iron sharpens iron. That's the best way to say it. Iron sharpens iron. And, you know, go ahead and I want to make sure you guys can hear me and uh, on the on the comments, somebody go out there and reach out and say, hey, we can hear you, Pastor Manny. I want to make sure uh, all of our, you know, uh, technology is, is running strong. Uh, you know, it's very good for me. I, that's just how I am. I just I that's just very that's just how I am. I so just go out there and shoot out some comments that you're hearing me. I know we're shooting out comments, but I want to hear the comments. You we're hearing you, Pastor Manny. You're fine. Thank you, Jesus. Susan, thank you, Susan. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Hallelujah. And says, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if Bo knows this. He's behind stage now. I don't know if he knows this. But, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the situation with Queen Elizabeth uh, and what's going on in that, in, in that era. But before we get into that, I'm going to bring uh, Brother Bo on. And Brother Bo, I want to welcome you once again to behind the scenes god bless you brother bo come on on hallelujah hey you are god bless you brother bo Woo! thank you jesus manny Talk. thank you thank you hey, for having man. me on thank you 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 know for just making me a part of of your ministry i appreciate you god bless you and you god bless your wife thank you amen well you are a part of our ministry but you also are part of our life you know, and I like it because I'm not alone here in California. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I like that, you know, because you have uh, uh, in Florida, you have Donna, Donna Rickney and you have Cad Kerr, you know. And so, you know, you got it. And then and the, Manhattan, you, and I, you and I are the West Coast connection. Yeah, we're the West Coast connection, you know. <laughs> so uh, so these are uh, these are glory days of the West Coast and not right. gloomy days. And I, and I speak that, and I, you know, it was interesting before I even knew that Bo even existed on the planet Earth, <laughs> brother Bo. I was like, Lord, California—it's not an easy state to deal with. You know? it's, a little, it's a little lonely. It's a little lonely over here at first. Yeah. You, know, I said, you, got, you, you know, you gotta, you got, you know, there, it has to be somebody else around here. You got Cat Kerr and, and John the Rickney, and and you have a few other uh, prophets in, in Florida. And I said, you know, and Florida's flowing. You know, I said, I, it's funny that you say that because I, I came from Canada, okay? When I was a young child, I was born in Canada, came from Canada. It's very, you know, tight-knit families, right? You have just, you know, it's like the, the cousins, the aunts, the uncles, just like family upon family, just layers upon layers. I went to East Coast, to Toronto, to school. I made friends, and it was just like family all over the place because you just – 
you just meet all these and everybody there that you meet just like these families. And then you meet another family who hooks, hooks you up with another family. And they're all just, it's massive intertwining of families. The family unit is rather strong on the East coast. I'm just telling mm. you, I've seen it. Right. And then I come to California and it's like the potpourri, you know, bit of everything. You put it all together and you mix it up and it doesn't really work, but it works. And, and <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very, very different. I'm telling you, it was very different, the family unit, when you come to California, when you are used to something very different, we know what's going on in the East Coast. So That's it was true. fun to, it's fun to, you know, meet you and, and know that you live here, in, you know, with, with me on the, on the West Coast now in California. And, um, you know, and there's a lot of Christians out here. Um, yeah. And it's really exciting to be able to see God do his miracles and watch it all come together. Um, and, and that's kind of what we can talk about today, about, uh, uh, you know, miracles. Mm. Because because that is the essence, you know. When the Red Sea parted and it closed, Manny, that was what? It was a miracle. Miracle. Okay. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fire, but Christ showed up, mm. that was a miracle. miracle. See? See, so... And when all hope is gone, when all hope is gone, that's when a miracle appears. And the miracle is his glory. So again, when all seems lost, when all hope is lost, every miracle, that's when every miracle takes place. And so what are we waiting for? You know, I've how many times have I been on your show, Manuel? Oh. And what have we read? Isaiah 61, over and over and over again, right? The year of the Lord's favor. You know, we've read Isaiah 61 is such a powerful, powerful verse. But the last mm -hmm. part of it, the mm -hmm. last part of Isaiah 61 states the day of vengeance mm -hmm. of our God. And so the day of vengeance is the miracle. It's the miracle that's about to come happen in our lifetime in our lifetime and then that's what's written on your hat it was about to be fulfilled the reason we don't see glory days is because we haven't seen the day of vengeance because god is two things he's love he's the biggest example of love in the universe okay he's love but but wisdom comes from knowing that there's a god that you have yes, someone sir. to answer to, right? Yes, so, because right. he's also, when it's necessary, he's judge. Mm -hmm. And so God is love, but the, what the evil ones seem to forget that they're that they have to answer to somebody, Manuel. These evil ones that have sold their soul, these evil ones on this earth that are doing what they're doing, Manuel. Please understand. Well, you you know. These uh -huh. people have to answer to somebody, you know, yes, and the starting yes. point of the story. What's, what's that saying in the Bible? The starting point of wisdom is what, you know, knowing that you have to answer to, to a higher power. That's right. You know, the, the, the scriptures tells us that, that, you know, the first platform or the foundation to wisdom is to, is to know that there's a God in heaven and you have to be accountable for this. And and saints, as, as Bo was speaking, I want to I want you to understand this. Studying the scriptures, I've noticed that it was the latter part when the Lord judged the enemy. Right. You see, but He made sure His people was taken care of. Remember, with the days of Noah, God made sure Noah was taken care of. His family in the ark, safe and sound, before he started to place judgment. And he didn't Look. close that door until he was ready to close the door. Come so on. The, point. the door closed. God closed the door. Noah didn't. God closed the door when it was time. Right. Everything's in God's perfect timing. So we are waiting for that moment in time for the door to close, just like it happened to Noah. Just like right. the Red Sea closed, just like Christ appeared in the fire for Shadrach, 
Meshach and Abednego. It's just that miracle moment. It's the miracle moment when that door closed. Noah was preparing. How, how, wasn't it 70 years that he took to build that? Or was it 100? I don't know. I forget what it well, was. Well, you know, they say, they say it was 120, but the Bible didn't say he. it took him 120. The Bible says it was 120 years before the Lord brought the flood. Yeah. That's what the scripture says. So, but the whole idea was, the fact is the boat was built. You just mentioned the Red Sea, Brother Bo. When did it happen? It didn't happen in the beginning. It happened at the end. Yeah. God said, now I'm going to judge the gods of Egypt. And then the Red Sea moment happened. But he made sure that Israel was safe and sound. And what did you just say? Now I'm going to judge the pharaohs of Israel, yes. right? of Egypt. Yes. That was your yes. word. Back mm -hmm. to what we started. God is two things. He's love. That's right. But he's also judge. He's also judge. And he's, and he's given just like Pharaoh, right? He's given, he even gave, he loved Pharaoh because he was his creation. Okay. <laughs> he was, all men were created equal at time of creation, right? Pharaoh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, dug in his heels and he decided to hang out with the evil ones and he refused to change his course. And but God gave him every opportunity. Those plagues were to not only they were basically to teach Pharaoh a lesson and to have him come back to God. But Pharaoh refused. Like the Pharaohs of this day, they refuse. And but we do have Pharaohs of this day, that's for sure. Yeah, the modern day Pharaohs. Mm -hmm. It's all we're watching. Ecclesiastes play out. That which has been will be again. We are watching the same events, meaning same type of events happen. The pharaohs of then, we have the pharaohs of now. Same things going on, same spirits, different people. Come on. But we're watching this play out. We, we are as if we are in the time of Egypt right now. We're, we're watching what was happening to Israel. We're watching this. You don't think it was looked horrible when Moses shows up and says, let my people go? And, he, and then Pharaoh says, go on and build, build, uh, make uh, with bricks without straw, right? Mm. And they're like, what's going on here, Moses? I thought you were the savior, right? But it just, it's just like, it's like this wave of, it looks good, it looks horrible, it looks good, it looks horrible. And it just, you know, they finally let my people go. He lets them go to get to the Red Sea. Pharaoh's coming at him, ready to kill them all. Moses, why have you brought us here to die? You see what I'm saying? It just... Oh, my gosh. It just get went on and on because no one really... as We saw all these incredible things. They saw these incredible things happen, and yet they still... You know, Israel still refused. You know, they get to the Red Sea, they're freed, and it's still not enough for them because they still don't believe. You know, they so... They still don't believe. Yeah, they still don't believe. So something... But the point is... After that Red Sea was closed, when Come the on. miracle occurred, when the Red Sea was closed, there was every army that ever came against Israel from that point forward, they heard of the story of the Red Sea, and they were all scared as heck of coming mm. against Israel. Because mm. if God is with you, who could be against you? Who can be against you? Who can be against you? Well, you know, we're in our ninth month, 2022. It's been some high, and we it's already been, hey, Brother Bo, it's already been what? an external. Not, Manuel, what month? What'd you say? What month? It's in, this is the ninth month, right? When is when is childbirth? Uh, oh wow! Never thought of it that way. Wow, that's 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 a nugget right there. Ninth month. The month of birthing, of birthing. Whoa, glory! Amen. Whoa. Oh my God! Listen. Do you realize I, that I, when, I, if you Google, if you Google childbirth full term, some people say it's thirty-eight, some people say it's thirty-nine, some thirty-seven, some forty. But ultimately, I've done the Google searches, and the magic number is thirty-eight weeks. Really. So yes. if 38 weeks is considered to be like full term for a child. So from Jan so date and time.com.
People can do this on their own. Okay. Date and time.com. Go do this later on. And you type in January 1, 2022, and you add 38 weeks full term. Mm. You know what date you come up with? September 24th, the last day of the biblical 50 year jubilee, as stated in Levit Leviticus. Mm. Elul 29. I believe because of what happened in London that was prophesied. Actually, you and Julie Green, I didn't see it. I heard about it by word of mouth that you and Julie Green talked about the situation with Queen Elizabeth. I don't know if she was on your program or you was on hers. Both. We went back and we put it on both platforms. The okay. video went viral. It was number one on Rumble this past weekend. It was crazy. Wow. <laughs> so it was just very power packed because the prophetic words of Julie, and we layered in timelines and scriptures on it. it. It was a powerful video. I think those who haven't seen it really need to go check it out. It was very, very powerful. Um, but go ahead, Mano. Okay. Well, anyway, um, this is good. So this was talked about here in 2021, December of 2021. I spoke about it twice under that anointing. You would hear about someone dying. And then I went a little deeper after a few other prophecies who you call queen. This is 20 of 20, 2021, December. And I'm going to show this because then I'll, I'll let you know how this was, this is going to take place in 2022. This was the prophecy. God said he's going to, this was going to be happening in 2022. And I'm going to have Brother Bo expand on it, on the conversation. Now, I didn't hear the conversation. I heard about it. I hit, I didn't hear it. So I didn't. So what he's going to say is all new to us on this channel. So this is going to be really powerful. I hope he remembers what him and Julie talked about, because I really believe God's going to use you very powerfully. And now I'm going to bring it on. <clears throat> Praise God. I'm going to bring it on right now. And let me see right now. And we're going to bring it on. And here we go. We're going to share that. And... Prepare yourself for what you will hear, or what you would call the media, news of someone dying. We fix that, it froze. This year I have done the removals. Next year will be the great Removal, saith the Lord. The great removal. For I have called this nation by my name because of past covenants that I have not yet walked away. You will see my mighty righteous right arm upon this nation. You will have to rewrite your historical history books. I am dealing with the Supreme Court, said the Lord. I am dealing with the Supreme Court. My spirit is going to flow on the highest Supreme Court of your land. And they will know the fear of the Lord. Which you see now will be turned over, saith the Lord. Which you see now will be turned over, saith the Lord. And once again, they will know that my hand is on what you call the United States and not the divided states. Fear not my people that are called by my name. You will understand when I say this is not just the year, but the season that I am pouring new wine and new wine skins. 
Prepare yourself, saith the Lord. Prepare yourself, saith the Lord. I will be visiting many of my children in a unique way. This is a season of recovery, saith the Lord. From the White House to God's house. The ears will tingle, both righteous and wicked, said the Lord. But I am opening the eyes of those that have been spiritually blind. Yes, the world, yes, the world which I have established will know that I am the Lord. Do not be in shock when you see certain leaders around the globe not there anymore. Do not be shocked when you see a shakening from Iran. Do not be shocked when you see a new president arise in Korea. Do not be shocked when you see the shakening in Germany. Do not be shocked, said the Lord. Where there is what you call queen will be taken home to be with the Lord. I am doing a shifting and a moving. Wow, that was powerful. The Lord never gave me a date. He just gave me the year. And we saw it's happening in the month of September. You, you drove it home, Brother Bo. The month of birthing. The month of birthing. Think about that. Think about that. The month of birthing. And you and Julie Green had this revelation. Like I said, I didn't hear it because I've been, I just came back from Minnesota. You know, the well, thing is, when you hear the truth, you know it. Yes. There you go. There you go. Wow. I think it was extremely symbolic to that this happened right now. Oh, much more than that, Manuel. This go ahead. Was, this was scriptural. Keep this going. Scriptural. So, Manuel, the prophecy of Jeremiah. So, Jeremiah the prophet prophesied that the king Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, would capture Jerusalem and Israel would be served Babylon, and Israel would serve Babylon for 70 years and be freed by King Cyrus to build God's house in Jerusalem. Okay? So, 70 years comes to an end, and then Israel is freed from Babylon by decree of King Cyrus, and you can read about that, which I know you have, Manuel, in, in Daniel 9. So that's where it's written. Now, the incredible part is, after how many years did we say, Manuel? After 70 years. You want to have a little fun math? Okay, so Queen Elizabeth became queen on February 6th, 1952. 70 years. 70 months and seven days since the day she became queen. Do you know when that is, Manuel? Today. Seven, seven, seven. She died 70 years and seven months from the time she was called queen and add seven more days we're at today. So all I'm telling you is that we are about to see the fulfillment of Isaiah 45, <clears throat> verse 13, which says, I will raise a Cyrus in my righteousness. I will make his way straight, and he will rebuild my cities and set my exiles free. So that is what the queen had to do with all of this. The queen's, the day she became queen was the marker, was the marker in time for what is about to happen and what's about to happen can be best described in Revelation. This is what I've, it's been on my heart for the past week now is Revelation 18, 
I've had this in my slide deck for, for the past couple of years, but what we're about to experience is Revelation 18 verses 8 through 9. And the simplest explanation of it is very simple. We started off this presentation, Manuel, and what happened? We're talking about a miracle, right? The miracle of the Red Sea, the miracle for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the miracles, you know, of the God closing the door for Noah. The, those are miracles and how everything changed suddenly in a single day. Because when that door closed for Noah, the ground burst open, water shot vertical. It, it was like that. It was everything changed from that moment on. So when you read Revelation 18, verses 8 through 9, it says clearly, in a what? A single day. In a single day. And this is the best part. Now, the queen represents what? The top of the pyramid for the kings of the earth. Come on. So Revelation 18, verse 9 states, And the kings of the earth will weep and wail. When the miracle that we're about to witness, when and you know what is the miracle? Again, it's the glory. It's the manifestation on earth of the glory that's about to manifest. When the glory manifests, it's the miracle. It's when everything looks hopeless. On suddenly, everything flips like the tables, what Jesus did in the tables to the money changers. Everything suddenly flips. So everything we believe to be the truth suddenly changes. So we're about to, these evil ones that work for this evil empire, they're about to witness the power of God. So God's been structuring all the pieces for generations, and so have they. But the, suck, mm. the horrible thing for them is God knows every one of their plans. So they've been strategizing to bring in this evil empire while God know, knew exactly what they were doing. He knew their game plan, and he knows, and there's a chancellor, uh, I can send you the video, but there's a chancellor in the United Kingdoms, I think, in, that actually just a few days ago, by accident, slipped out that he stated, September 24th will be, will be a day the world will never forget. You will know where you were on, that, were on that date. So apparently, they have, Something horrific scheduled for the world. They have something horrific scheduled for the world. And it appears to be occurring on the, somewhere around, on or about the 24th. But you have to understand, right? God's a master chess player. He's you know, the best part. I think Amanda states this the best, right? A master chess player makes the opponent think they're going in for the kill. When he already's got a bigger plan and he's got the final the final move, so That's as like a Red Sea moment, wow! Right, so as horrific as their plan is for this month, I don't know what their plan is. No one knows, but they they have a very sick agenda planned, and God knows what they're going to do. So do not focus on what happens on the twenty fourth. Whatever it is, on or about that date, I don't know. But as but whatever horrible things are about to happen, you have to understand that when when Jesus met with um, the 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 prophecy um, was, was Nicodemus, right? He met with Nicodemus, and he described you know how to be born again. He described the death to life. He described the baptism to Nicodemus, right? The United States. So we, it's going to go through this death moment. So something horrible is about to happen. This is important to understand. It's going to be horrible. The death of the country you knew. Something big is about to happen. I don't know what that means. But they're already planning something. But the best part is God's in control. So That's, what I, want, what, that's what I wanted to, to say. So God, he knows what they're going to do. So don't look at what the events are that they do. It's the counter it's the checkmate move that god pulls out of nowhere it's the miracle move that god's going to pull on these people when they think they got it so they think they're going to win 
they're going to be thinking that glorious is about to happen on automatically the opposite happens. And that will be the manifestation of the miracle. And what is the miracle? It's the glory of God. And thus we will witness revelation 18 verse nine. We're going to witness it. The Kings of this earth will weep and wail because they just got exposed. They just, the truth just got revealed. And what does the truth do, Manuel? What does the truth do? The truth sets you free. That's right. The truth can make you free. Saints, as Brother Bo was talking, I was just hearing it all in my spirit. When the, when the enemy has a plot, God has a plan. Woo! Yes! Oh! <laughs> Bo, use it, please. Down, I'm telling you, when the enemy has a plot, God has a plan. And this is what's going on. And this yeah. is going down. Oh, shit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm going to clear my servant of all charges. Whoa. Of all charges, he will be cleared of all charges against him. Regarding this home, red said of the Lord. This will not prosper. This will not prosper, but will go down in history as you see my righteous right arm upon this situation. Because my courts, my courts have declared and decreed him innocent before the enemies. And you will see this. You will see this even in what you call the media. That all charges will be cleared. And my plans will move forward, say that the Whoa! Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Powerful. Whoa! Man. Thank you. Shout wow. out the, the word of God. Mm. Whoa! Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Whoa! Amen. This is historic, saints. This is historic. This is historic. As the Lord had me to prophesy, this is going to be an historic year, and it has been. It has been. But I'm going to tell you something. The enemy will run out of plots, but God will never run out of plans. Like Brother Bo said, the enemy thinks he's going to have the advantage. He thinks he's going to have the edge. But praise God in heaven. We got the praying saints all over the world. The praying saints in this nation. And let me tell you something, saints. Our prayers makes a major difference. Our prayers makes a major difference. Because God has something to do with this nation. We are not here by mistake. Bo is not here. I'm not here. You're not here by mistake. These exposures that have been taking place these last handful of years, Brother Bo, it hasn't been by mistake. God the, will allow something. Go ahead, brother. But the exposures that have been kind of coming out, Manuel, the problem is... This is so important to understand the problem of the exposures that have come out in, in, all, in the past year or two to all these years. Saints, the Lord has a final word of everything. Of everything, God has a final word. Even in the days of uh, even in the days of the tribulation, God has a final word. Who goes where? Who goes to the lake of fire? Who goes into the kingdom of God? God has a final word. Not the devil. Not the false prophet. Right. Not, not the beast. God always has a final word. That's right. And in our time right now, and in your life, my life, this era, God has a final word. Not the White House. Not the government. Not London. Not the new king of... London, Prince uh, King Charles the Third. He didn't have the final. God has the final word. 
understand that he's not king yet. They might he's call not him king, king yet. But he, he might, they okay. might call him king, but there was no coronation ceremony where he swears an oath. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. So there's no court. So he might be called king, but he's not officially king yet, or there was no, there is and has not been a coronation ceremony yet. And the coronation ceremony is where he swears an oath to allegiance to the people, whatever it is he swears an oath to, but he has not sworn an oath yet. So you can call him king all you want, but he has not been coronated king. And that would well, be thank you for mentioning king. that. That would be the same, same example as if uh, you, uh, the president wins an election. But it's not until the inauguration he becomes the official president. So the coronation ceremony is, we don't, I'm not sure what the date is. Some, some people are saying next year. And the prophetic word is he'll never make it. <laughs> I can see why because, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So, so just well, we're, in shake, we're, we're, we're in for shaking. I'm serious. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know. Um, I wasn't aware of that. I all I was aware of what God told me in part that the queen was going to be taken home to be with the Lord. That's all I heard. And you will hear about someone dying in the media, which we did hear. Why did I show the prophecies? And we've seen those things, okay? But why have I showed the prophecy? Because the Lord said the the whole idea of those prophecies was that God was saying to his people before I even spoke, these are the things that we will see come to pass in the year 2022. When I spoke the prophecy in December of 2021, I will show you my hand is on your nation that is called the United States and not the divided states. That my hand is on your nation. So he said, these things will come to pass. The founding fathers are no wow. longer here, but the covenant stands. Come on, that's it. The, the covenant, covenant stands. stands. And we have a covenant. We that's just right. like we have a covenant, just like Israel. The covenant stands no matter what they plan and thwart against us or try to do. God will, what their plans, thwart their plans. This nation is under a covenant. I saw that when the Lord took me back in time. I saw the covenant that they spoke with the Lord. That was powerful. Because I was like, Lord, they're breaking all the rules here. They're breaking all the constitutional rules. What do we have? What do we have if man cannot stand behind their own rules? And the Lord says, my son, and he took me back and I saw the covenant that was made on this soil called the United States. That covenant at that time when they made it, it was 13 colonies. That's where I, that's where he took that far back. He took me, but it was for what we see now. God is a covenant God. So that's why I have no problem. Knowing what God is about to do and is doing because of, of a covenant. This is going to be God's hand. If we depend on man and for them to abide by their rules, Bo, we'll be waiting for, not, for, the, for the next few generations. No, no, no. We'll be in concentration camps. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> because because that's going to they're going to keep pushing their agenda, right? So so that's evil right. is not going to stop. So evil is going to keep pushing their agenda because what is their look? What happened in Nazi Germany? Okay, they're going to keep pushing that agenda because Satan's a copycat. He's not going to do anything new. He's going to do exactly what he did before. Okay, and you saw what happened in World War Two. That's what they if if they had their way, if. This is so important. If God doesn't, if we do not see the miracle, meaning the manifestation of his glory, this would lead to what happened. Some, some terrible times. Okay? Some serious, some serious this, terrible times. Yeah. yeah yes. That is and what see, we must have. And, and you see, you, you, you see what the, what the present administration is doing with the, with, with, with the Constitution. Yes. This is what they, I'm giving a type in the shadow. This is what they think of the Constitution. Right. Yeah, tear it up. That's what okay. 
This is what they think of it. All right. It's our time now. It's our rules now. Mm-mm. But there's God. Yeah, they, you see, like they, 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 they don't plan. See, they, they haven't planned that they didn't plan that God was going to intervene. Is God the end of the That's not part of their plan, but it's called part of God's plan. Woo! You see, amen. amen. Their plans, they say that they, they don't know. Pharaoh didn't know when, when he went into the Red Sea that God was going to intervene. Yeah, Pharaoh thought when Moses before Moses went to Egypt. Pharaoh thought that he was going to have those slaves for hundreds and hundreds of more years. Woo! Yeah. <clears throat> you see, the enemy never plans that God is going to intervene. He never plans on that. Even in Revelation. You know? Well, it's just like the Battle of Armageddon. Revelation. Yeah, well, like Revel you bring a Revelation, right? Imagine the, the Battle of Armageddon. Like, these people are going to go to war with God I don't, I just, I still, fa I can't fathom that, right? But they're going to go to war knowing that God is going to, he's going to line up all the pieces just to strike him down in a, in a day. He opens day. his mouth. Woo! God opens his mouth. Boom! Yeah. They're gone. You see? And that'll be, and that'll be the manifestation. That's, that's when Christ manifests, right? Right now, the glory. And then later on, Revelation, Armageddon, we'll see, you know, that's when that, we're talking Christ. But this is, it's just incredible. These people actually think that they're going to get away with what they've done. It, it's, it, you know, but again, see, the problem is um, Satan knows, you know, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And so, you know, when you think you understand everything, step back and look at, you know, the big picture, because, you know, God, the earth is God's footstool, right? And so why is all this happening? It's a battle for what, Manuel? For the soul. For the soul. You, you, we had I, Biden. I was, Biden actually was on just on stage. You know, this is a battle for the soul of the nation. They're they're telling you this is a battle for not the soul of the nation, particularly, it's for your soul. It's for your soul. They're battling for your because Satan knows he's never going to go to heaven. He hates God for kicking him out of heaven. He knows he's not ever going to be back there. So all he and he knows that God loves his Satan knows that God loves his creation. I'm going to repeat Come on. Satan knows God loves his creation. So all that Satan can do, all that he can do is, is try to hurt God by taking as many souls to hell with him as Come possible. On. Tell him, tell him, and tell him. He's lies, kills, steals, destroys, cheats. That's all he's doing is to take as many souls with him to hell for all eternity. So this is a battle here on earth for souls. It's not just the souls of the nation. It's for your soul. And back to what we talked about. Choose this day whom you will serve. Don't sit on the fence. It's not time for that anymore. Oh, no. Oh, no. Saints, let me tell you something. Let me tell you why the wicked will lose. They serve a prince, a fallen prince, a fallen angelic. Of Bezabah, Lord of the flies. We serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We do not serve the Lord of the flies. <laughs> That's good. Okay. That's good. All right. Now, 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 now I'm gonna tell you something about this. Flies don't have a long life. Oh <laughs> flies always like to hang out near the tail and the butt. We are not the tail, we're the head. Woo! It's a good description, extremely good description, Manuel. Mm -hmm. Extremely good. This good is visual. seriously. Yeah, it's true. We serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Who in the heck wants to sit there and follow the Lord of the Flies, Bezabah? Are you kidding me? You have to be. Amen. Yes. It's true. So we're on the side that wins all the time. I want to encourage you to say, stand. Stand. Let's finish this race. Let's finish this era with the Lord. Let's, let's do what he's called us to do. Let's stand on the righteousness of God. These are glory days and not gloomy. Gloomy for the wicked and glory for the righteous. Let the Lord do what he has to do and bless his name for it. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Let him remove those that need to be removed and raise Amen. up those that need to raise up. Hallelujah! Right now, 
It's the voice of the men and women of God that are speaking those things that be not as though they were. Yeah. We're speaking to encourage you. We come on you. We come in your and in, in live streams, uh, some every day, some every week, to, to be strong and of good courage. Before Joshua fought his first battle without Moses, God had to minister to Joshua. Be strong and be of good courage. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Seriously. Because he was about to bring down some demonic kings. And God told him, whatever your foot has landed, I will give you. He says, meditate on my word day and night. You will be successful. He says, keep your eye on me, Joshua. Because you're on the side that wins. We're on the side that wins. Saints, we're the Joshua's of today. We're the Davis of today. We're the Joseph's of today. We're the Esther's of today. The Deborah's of today. We're the Peter's, the Luke's, the John's, the Mark's of today. Man, we'll talk about the spiritual uprising. What happens in the kingdom economy, kingdom age? We, well, are we going to have the greatest spiritual uprising that we've ever seen in history? Talk about it. You have not seen anything yet. Okay? This is an era. It's not going to be what they call a three-day revival. Those days are over. You know? Oh, it's always oh, happening over there. Oh, it's happening over there. No, 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 no. This is an outpouring of his spirit that's going to go on and on and on and on and on. I didn't say the world's going to be perfect. But the world's going to have the knowledge of God. They're going to have the knowledge of who he is. God's going to make himself known. Everybody else has been trying to Amen. make themselves known. Presidents and prince and 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 and, 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 and want to be kings. I'll just say it that way. And, and uh, uh, you know, movie stars and actors. Enough! No more, ho ho no more Hollywood. 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 God is a shift. It's a change. God is pushing back, you know, the title of man and bringing back his name. Amen. The world will know that he there's a God in heaven. They know that there's a, and they have to make a choice. The era when God is preparing you and I into an era where we will walk into our sex, our supernatural anointing in such a way that that has never been. We, you know, we're, we're, we're God, you know, the, the Lord said, why do we keep going back every year celebrating anniversaries of the Azusa Street Revival? Actually, Manuel. How long are we going to do that? God, can I, Manuel, let me pause you for a minute. You just brought up something. This is crazy. You just brought up the Azusa Street Revival. Do you like this? Come on. A, a reader of mine, my name is Stuart, sent me this. Manuel, this is great. So Azusa Street Revival was one of the biggest, you can Google this, but basically in a nutshell, it was probably one of the biggest spiritual uprising in, in history next to like what happened at, at, for the apostles. It was the Holy Spirit came down and just people were getting healed. It was crazy. It was led by William Seymour. And what did he prophesy? You're going to like this, Manuel. He prophesied that in a hundred years, in a hundred years, God will pour out his spirit like the days of Azusa, but greater. Manuel, he died September 28th, 20, 1922. A hundred years is this September 28th. We are two weeks away Woo! from the start of fulfillment of the prophecy of William Seymour that we're about to see the, the, the greatest outpouring of God's spirit ever on this earth. And you know what, I know, you know, Haggai 2 verse 8, uh, verse 9 says, and uh, the latter rain, the latter house will be greater than the former. That's right. That's right. Get ready, people. Man, well, I got to go here, so I got another interview. Okay. Wrap it up. Give us a prayer. Wrap it up for us. I love you, Manuel. Thank you for having me here. We love you. Thank you so much, Brother Bo. And, 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 and you know, yeah, you know, when, by the week and a half, you're coming back. Hallelujah. Woo! And uh, listen, we're on Rumble right now. We're on Rumble. We've been on Rumble for two weeks now. So, uh, you know, we have to, you know, stretch our wings. And uh, so please, if you want to connect us, you can connect with us on Rumble. Please tell your friends. We are also on Rumble right now. 
Okay. Well, as we go, we're going to stay on Rumble and, you know, and YouTube and all the places we're just stretching because I found, because we need to just get the word out there. So uh, you can catch this on YouTube. You can catch this on Rumble, Facebook. You know, we get tons of views on Facebook. Bro doesn't even know it. But yes, bro, every, all, all of our, all, all of our, you, 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 you didn't even know it. You see, he watches our YouTube channel, but he didn't know that we're on, we get tons of views on Facebook. So, so God is getting the, because God is getting the word out there. He wants you to know what he's about to do. All righty. So let's receive it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless every person, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl right now on this broadcast, on this live stream. Lord, release your, your, your glory, your favor on the people. Lord, release your healing power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to put that up there right now on the screen for, for those of the, that are asking about the rumble thing. Uh, since it's, uh, it's something, you know, we're enjoying it. We're, we're starting to, we're starting to get momentum, brother, but we're getting momentum on it. So, so God is moving on that. And I, I really thank the Lord, um, what, it, what he's doing, what he's doing. So there it is, it's on the screen, but, uh, you go to, um, um, when you go to rumble, do not go Manuel Johnson, because I didn't realize people already had my name and put an account in my name and they're getting hundreds of th thousands of views in my name. So I had, so I had to use my nickname, Manny C. Johnson, Manny C. Johnson. Okay. So Bo, you can go to it. Uh, it's going to be there. We're going to upload this. It will be on in, in rumble in a few hours. Glory to God. So but we got to get the word out. We love you. We love you, Bo. And we will, um, you know, um, and we're going to, uh, I, I don't know, as, as I just mentioned yet, but um, they want to see you in Florida. So you got to make that decision. <laughs> well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say he's going to be there. Oh, he's not going to be there. I'm just going to leave it alone. But there's a, you know, get free, can you get brother Bo? I said, okay, look, look, you know, Dr. Brent, I did tell him, you know, <laughs> glory to God. Please tell your wonderful wife, we said hello, we look forward to seeing you. And Bo, we'll see you in a little bit. God bless you. We love you. Love God you. Bless God you bless you, God bless you. Hi, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for being here. God bless.